Hey everyone, this is Jason Kendall, and this is a continuation of the online lecture series that I've been doing. A very long time ago, uh, when I was a little boy, uh, we still had a film and photo film photography, which meant there was a piece of film, a, a negative on which you would uh, on which you would take your image. You'd focus the camera and you'd load that film in there pull the film across the reel and hope that no stray light got in there and didn't get too warm and all sorts of stupid stuff. And if you did it right and you took the film out of the canister and submitted it to the Kodak company by mail, they would mail you back in a couple of, like a week or two, all of your pictures. And that was with a standard 35 millimeter or those little 110 things, those little clicking points. Nowadays, it's a little easier because People take snapshots with uh, with digital imagery, and digital imagery comes about with the revolution of this thing called the charged coupled device. CCDs are are basically light buckets that can accumulate charge on the surface of a grid, and the and the surface of the grid and the buckets that in which they accumulate the light. Um, what they do is they're photosensitive to specific colors and specific wavelength bands, and then when you actually reconstruct the image, you get in an image that you see. Well, so what we have here in this first uh, slide, and what you've been seeing me talk over, is actually what the camera looks like. And so you have a bunch of pins that go into, into a charge couple device, and actually the CCD itself is the gray material in the center. And you'll see a whole bunch of uh, a bunch of leads going out from the gray material, and those things actually draw the image out. So let's see exactly what we're looking at. If we then take a strong zoom in on just one corner, um, what we're looking at here in this in this section is basically a uh, one of the one of the pictures for the um, for a detector on say the Hubble Space Telescope or other detectors. But the important point is the uh, such astronomical detectors. If we zoom in very tightly, you can see the grid pattern on this letter A image that we see, and they're very, very, very tiny grids. So the, char the uh, light drops upon the, the grid, and it, it excites an electron out of an atom, and that electron is a current. And so it gets stored in a voltage, and uh, by a voltage in, in below the collector area, and then that gets read out periodically. Maybe you wish to take a 60 second image or maybe you wanna take a one second image. You expose the CCD with a charge across it and then that'll accumulate a series of, a series of uh, a, basically a one-to-one, -one, almost one-to-one -one of the total number of photons that hits the charge couple device. Those things then accumulate the total number of electrons that are freed by the photons coming into the detector. And then you read, essentially, the total number of electrons that get freed by the photons. And you see on the top of the image of letter A, you see what kind of looks like a gated readout image. And early charge couple devices said, okay, everything's all read in. You change the voltage across it in a periodic way. Read it from one row at a time by pulling the charge by, by voltage, voltage differences into the read array. And then you dump them out once you've read how many charges are in each bucket. And you do that for every single row, and each row moves up into the read array at the top. And eventually you read out exactly what you have. So let's go on and look at what we mean by this readout array. Um, we can see that this is, a, this is these are, many of these slides come from Pearson Education, just so you know, and come out of Macmillan uh, Pearson Education textbooks. Um, so I'm just using what they use. You can find these all over the web, no matter what, and they're pretty pretty much everywhere. Um, but what we see is that there's the buckets that look like a grid in the lower portion of it, and yes, they're very small. They can be uh, tenths of millimeters in size, and that's actually a pretty big array. These are kind of like the arrays that you might see back when things were really beginning, say back in the 1990s or so, but they're not indicative of today's extraordinarily uh, high resolution arrays that you might find in, a, in an iPhone 10 or in a Droid. So you can see that the bottom, port, bottom half of this image are a series of grids, and those would be where the buckets are, and then across are the two readout arrays that show you the voltage difference in, in a given array. So they would, the entire row would be moved up into the read array, and then it's the total amount of electrons in that read array would be pulled into the final read array to see exactly how many, uh, what, the, what the, the total charge that was accumulated in that bucket. So that's how we do it. 
Um, so what happens is then you build row by row by row a series of things that says how many electrons were in each row. And you read them row by row by row, and you find that you build up an image by saying, oh, in this one there were zero, in this one there were one electron, this one had three electrons, this one had seven electrons, maybe this one had back down to one, and then this one had maybe seven, nine, or whatever. And the total number of photons that were incident upon the detector is almost one to one, or pretty close to one to one. It's very efficient array. Um, these very efficient arrays will take maybe 70% efficiency. So let's call it 70%. So if you have, if you see on this particular image, you see number nine. So that was, uh, maybe there were uh, 16 photons that, uh, or, or maybe more like, um, more like about 14 photons that fell on it. And it detected nine of them. The other was, the others were lost. They just didn't, they didn't impact and, and free an electron from an atom such that it could be captured in the, in the array below. But then when you read them out, you get an image. So black would be zero and nine would be white. So the more photons you have, the brighter the image. And so you get this pixelated sort of appearance. And in the very, very, very finest images, no matter how small your images are, eventually a digital image will look like this at some layer. Even the, most ex even the best of digital imagery will eventually look like this at some point where you simply say, this is the pixel, this is its brightness at this value. And notice this is a black and white sort of image. So you have grayscale that goes from black to white and the grayscale is adjusted for that. So we can have different gradations of it. So if you think of like a 256 color scheme, maybe we just have, oh, that's a different deal, but Let's say we're we're just saying how many there's 256 shades of gray. So we could say we could we could in theory say that we could only tell the difference between zero and 256 electrons. That it's kind of shallow, but perhaps the the readout array is better than that. Maybe you can get a thousands, but then the if the display is so poor that you can only read 256, then there you go. In any event, so here's how here's how a more modern CCD schematic works, is that the image capture area is on the top, and the, the actual size and arrangement of a CCD doesn't have to be square, it can be rectangular. They tend to be they tend to be square-ish, but if you can capture the entire but but some of them are, are rectangular. Um, they will say the image capture area is where the light is incident upon, and what will happen then is the storage area, all that, that image gets dumped across by voltage differences into the storage area, and then you, do, uh, you, you then uh, serially shift them out of the storage area, and then do a look at do a do a do a multiply do a uh, amplifier to multiply it because individual electrons that's a really small small output. So the output amplifier actually amplifies the, uh, multiplies the total number of electrons in there. So if you have one electron, it'll dump up like, you know, maybe multiply by a thousand volts. So you can actually read the image. So you catch it in the, amp the image capture area. It gets dumped over to the storage area one to one. And then you shift from the, ser and then you go one at a time into the shift register. And then that gets dumped into the multiplier and then out to actually uh, see exactly how many electrons there were. So by that way, we can then process the images in order to maximize uh, the data aspect of it. So really in astronomy, we don't really care about color images per se. We're more important, we more are, are more interested in the total number of photons that fall in a given location through a filter. So we'll always put some sort of filter in front of the detector and we'll say, well, this is a red filter or a blue filter, or an ultraviolet filter or a Johnson U or Johnson Johnson B or a Sloan little U or a Sloan little V, any number of different kinds of filters. And as the light passes through that filter, everything else except the light that can pass through the filter is then incident upon the detector. And that shows us the location of where it happens and how bright it is at that location through that filter. So we can see that all of these objects, they might be, say, visible light objects. And, and as we, we have low resolution on the left and it gets higher and higher resolution on the right, and the resolution is dependent on how many pixels there are in the CCD, as well as the aperture of the telescope and the, and, the, and the surface area of the telescope and the resolution of the telescope. So we can see that at a low resolution, we've got big, big pixels, and as we get better and better resolution, we have fewer and fewer pixels. So in general, what we always look at with telescopic imaging is that telescopic imaging is all about the, uh, is all about the readout of an array into an array of pixels. 
So where did this really come from? This comes from an idea of what's called the photoelectric effect. And the photoelectric effect basically says once a, if when you have a photon, which is a particle of light incident upon an atom, if it has the right amount of energy, it can liberate that electron from that atom. And then the electron can then be stored in a voltage trap until you can read it out. So the efficiency of CCDs can be upwards of 70 to 80 percent. Old photography was efficient only about 1 to 2 percent. So the old photographs that you might see, that's why they took so long to make those photographs. And if you look photographs from like the 1880s and 1890s, you'd see that their eyes are blurry. That's because people couldn't keep their eyes still. So the reflected light off of people's eyes usually looked blurry because you couldn't hold still. So you, so they, were, they could, you could stand still, but your eyes would move. And so if you look at the old, old, old pictures, they had, it took so long to make the image that, the, that it weren't clear on the eyes. That's kind of an interesting thing about old pictures. So now the readout is so incredibly fast that you can take uh, millisecond, uh, millisecond images or, or, fa or some with certain CCDs, even faster images than that. But in general, your phone works, your iPhone and any other detectors that are like that work in a very similar way in that all the light gets trapped in these boxes and then the boxes get read out one at a time, box by box by box. And however much light goes in there gives you the brightness at that location through the filter. All right, so next time we'll be talking more about, uh, more about light and telescopes and uh, to see more about exactly how you turn this kind of image or an image that's created by a CCD into a color image, go look at my M20 uh, reduction by using GIMP and Fitz Liberator, which is also on my YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time. See you soon.